they'll just try to do a little bit. I uh, just came in from uh, the ranch out by by Alice, where I teach on uh, Thursdays. <coughs> and I did Acts chapter 11, which you'll see that this is going to be... I have, I have like, empty time that I have to keep busy for a certain amount of time. <coughs> so I'm doing this. Uh, I wish I could have the radio on, but uh, Facebook will mute those. So this is a spot. There was a wreck on uh, Crosstown, so I wasn't able to work that here. Uh, I mean, yeah, a wreck on uh, SPID, which is the main road when we come in. So I had to do a little detour, but that's fine. Sometimes they do the detour, and I look at my time, how much time I have. You know, it's only 4:20, and that's how I decide whether or not I'm going to uh, talk or not. today bit of pain, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's just uncomfortable in my right lung area. <laughs> but, um, everything is good. Everything is good. <laughs> today, I just, uh, but any update on the news would be today, uh, the Trump passed the somewhat partial repeal of Obamacare. And, you know, I have a couple of friends that were upset. Conservatives may be happy. But the House passed it. Whether the Senate will pass it, we don't really know. The debate, the honest debate, if I could just give the, the honest debate, before, uh, of course, some liberal friends will uh, count the numbers of how many millions will possibly lose health care might still be upset uh, that he gave too much. In general, the honest debate is when President Obama did pass Obamacare, one of the things in the law was they were going to do a lot of funding. But the funding that they were going to do besides the normal funding was during the time of transition to a new program, uh, the government, federal government, would pitch in so much tax money to help it transition. But that was really something that would never go away. For instance, it wasn't just transition money. It would be uh, basically much more of a universal health care than was actually admitted in that area. But he figured they'll do it, they'll get it passed when he passed Obamacare. And in reality, many of the major insurers have dropped out and are dropping out. So to be quite honest, uh, whether you support Trump or not, when he made the statement that said, look, Obamacare's ready to fail, that's actually true. It, uh, because the insurers were all bailing out. And if Hillary Clinton got in, the honest uh, opinion of what would have happened to it is there would have been a, and she kept Obamacare intact, it would have faced a tremendous problem for what I just mentioned. Just so happened Trump got in, everybody, a lot of people surprised. And now, those that are on the left side of the aisle are going to say, see what Trump did, because you're still going to have problems with the whole health care. Even if Trump did not pass, whether the Senate passed it or not, you're still going to have problems. But now the other, the left or the Democrats will say, see, this is why we have the problems, because Trump did that. You either, you're either for universal Canadian health care type thing, which is the most liberal position, or you're not. And they didn't, Obama didn't pass a Canadian type thing, you know. Okay. And then a few notes. We'll see what we'll talk about. I did Acts 11. And this spot is off of uh, Yorktown Road, but I, I thought, oh, this would be good. I'll stop here for a second. Because my uh, daughter who lives in town, their house is really... I live actually right off of this Oso Bay. 
this is the Oso Bay. I live on that side down there. My daughter lives over there. So we ride those little four-wheel motorcycles. We take them down here. This is one of the spots where we come to. I thought this would be good. And just a, a brief review of uh, some of the stuff I talked about. I did the Acts 11 real quick, but it was, it's a... It's kind of an important chapter because that's the beginning of the Gentile Christians. I didn't even post my Acts 10 yet, I don't think, the teaching on it. But Acts 10 was the conversion of Cornelius, the beginning of the Gentiles coming into the church. In the early days of Christianity, uh, initially the original followers and the 12 apostles, they didn't understand that the gospel would go to the non-Jews. Gentiles, and Peter has, I taught all this, it's coming up, or I already posted it, but Peter in Acts 10 has the great experience, the vision, God, there's a sheet come down out of heaven with unclean animals, and God is showing them, I'm going to, now, that whole vision in Acts 10 was God telling Peter, don't call the Gentiles, the non-Jews, unclean anymore. Those who believe are going to be part of the community, part of the church. And that's what the beginning of the Gentiles coming into the church. And in Acts 11 is the beginning of the community in Antioch. The city of Antioch was the first Gentile community. I even forgot to mention on a teaching video I did earlier, but uh, they'll call Christians first at the city of Antioch. You're going to see a lot of uh, non-Jews and Greeks. The message was going to the Greeks. They're all accepting the Lord. And then Barnabas, who's the companion somewhat of Paul the Apostle in the beginning, he's the one that accepted Paul when the others were afraid of him after Paul's conversion in Acts 9. And Barnabas is going to go down to Antioch and see those Christians. And then he goes and gets Paul from the city of Tarsus. So... Paul and Barnabas, are, I'll link this to the whole teaching. Paul and Barnabas are going to be there in the city of Antioch for a year. And a prophet comes down. His name is Agabus. The Bible says, during those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to the city of Antioch. And this prophet Agabus, he's going to also give a prophecy later on in the book of Acts. But he prophesies and says, great Darth is coming, King James. Great Darth, great famine is on the way, and it, and it was God preparing the people. And that gift of prophecy did indeed have an element of foretelling. I mentioned this on the video that I told earlier. Some, uh, the simple gift of prophecy is sort of like preaching and exhortation and encouragement, but this particular gift has foretelling in it, meaning something's going to happen. And he warns them the Christians and says there's going to be a, a famine, so almost like the dreams that Joseph interpreted for Pharaoh in the book of Genesis. And then at the end of chapter 11 of Acts, they decide to send relief to the Christians in Judea and Jerusalem, meaning they're going to start helping the poor Christians because the famine's coming. And that will be a mainstay of Paul's future ministry, collection for the saints. So I kind of covered that briefly, and I'll upload this right now. It gives me a, it's important to have also like a regular communication, not just the three days late or a week late when I upload, <coughs> because you're speaking, and it strengthens those who are called to do that, and then it makes an importation to the people that you speak into. That's the goal of a lot of preaching that we read about in the book of Acts is like that. It's not prepared sermons. They're preaching. In the midst of all that's going on, even the letters of the New Testament are penned in the midst of great affliction. Some of the epistles are called prison epistles. Hope you can hear me as well. So they're always in the midst of reflection, always in the midst of going through difficulty. So uh, I had a few things. I was going to buy a motorcycle 
actually had I bought a motorcycle battery at Walmart, charged it up. Brand new battery for a Honda Goldwing. But then it didn't work out. He couldn't find the key. I went all the way to Alice the Sunday. So then I thought, oh, maybe my daughter bought a nice little trailer. My my younger daughter, Debbie, bought a nice travel trailer and put it on the ranch where my daughter has a house. And I looked at it. I said, oh, this is nice. It's sad in the sense because some of my homeless friends, many of them don't even have anything like that. But my younger daughter is going to help my daughter, Rebecca, with the nonprofit dog rescue that they do. It's so cute because I was out there. They have, my daughters pick up dogs. They can find homes for them all the way. Some of them they send to New Jersey, as a matter of fact. And the one I just saw earlier, his name is Alex. And they had to have, they took him in. He had to have a leg amputated, so he's got three legs. But he's such a cute dog. The one back leg is missing. He's hopping around. And I'm like, oh, I might take him. I actually think that way because I start petting them. I have dogs in my house. So my daughter, uh, youngest, set up a nice travel trailer. She's going to stay out there a few days a week. And so I was thinking, oh, yeah, I should get something where I can, because I'm ready to kind of, if my vehicle was in better condition, I might have just took another road trip. So today, uh, I'll do this. I'll upload it. Give me something to work on. I've got some, like, dead time where it's beneficial to communicate. So I'll upload this right now.